Welcome to Monday, November 20th, 2023. Your day weather podcast is being brought to you by Hot Springs County Travel and Tourism, reminding you that as temperatures drop and snow is on the horizon at Thermopolis, you can always find yourself in hot water. Changes are coming for sure. Model agreement is much, much better. We're starting to get a more clear picture of what's going to be evolving as the week wears on. We did see some changes over the weekend and overnight with a frontal system, disorganized one moving in, producing a few showers, and it will be chilly and brisk today. We're gonna see a little bit of shower activity. This is a disorganized system. This is the one we talked about last week that was kind of coming through pieces. So some of you will see some showers. All of you will have some wind and some colder temperatures today. Good news, rebounding temperatures and good travel weather into the region Tuesday and Wednesday. The good news about this travel period coming up is tomorrow and Wednesday. If you'll be going to grandma's house, driving across the region, flying across the region Tuesday, Wednesday, really nothing too bad. However, we're going to see a collision of air masses. An Arctic surge coming out of Canada is going to collide with a, a small but moist Pacific weather system. But when you put two air masses like this together, you're going to get winter weather. And this is going to be developing during the day on Thanksgiving, but especially Thanksgiving night into Friday and Saturday as Arctic air and Pacific moisture collide. So this is definitely going to cause travel problems. The inner mountain west and the adjacent high plains, there's going to be travel concerns Thanksgiving Day, Thursday through Saturday. Travel weather improves Sunday, although Sunday is likely going to be frigid across the inner mountain west. The coldest air we've had in a while is going to be coming on in. It's going to have some stickiness to it, meaning the, the cold is going to stick around for a little while. Before we get to the the meat and potatoes of the weather forecast. Some great photos to show you. This one coming out of near Grants, New Mexico over the weekend as they got some shower activity in the form of rain and snow. Nice rainbow there. Also got two pictures of the same thing. Sunrise Sunday morning in the Cheyenne, Wyoming area. Looked like a sun pillar there going on up as the sun came up, giving us a really nice shot. And then the moose enjoying a little bit of fresh snow that Grace Jackson County, Colorado near Walden over the weekend is the mountains picking up a bit of snow in the region over the weekend, and that is going to be a trend that is going to continue. This is why. Satellite photos this morning show a couple of players that are going on. In fact, there's three players. This area of low pressure right here in the Gulf of Alaska is going to be what really feeds us the snow later on this week. We have the disorganized area of low pressure right here. You can see the counterclockwise spin. The main low is going to be centered over Kansas, pieces of the low going around. Then up here, we have changes in the jet stream causing some buckling and some pooling of cold air up there in north central Canada. And these two systems up here and here are going to be what uh, will be the weather maker. So you can see the low today. There it is. We've got the high pressure along the west coast, the low up there in the Gulf of Alaska as we showed you, then the cold air in those blue colors up there in north central Canada. Now, between now and tomorrow, this is the precipitation forecast. So if you're headed to the eastern side of the country, this is in the majority of this is all rain, but it's going to be wet in the Midwest and the eastern areas. We're going to see some good showers across parts of central and eastern areas of South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma. And then here in the Intermountain West, there's going to be the scattered showers around today. You can see they're going to want to be closer to and near the mountain areas. And this is what the snowfall forecast looks like through tomorrow. Then as we get into, this is for Wednesday, a westerly flow. This is what brings the mild weather as uh, we temporarily have a mild flow of Pacific air. So this is what's going to lead to the better weather tomorrow and Wednesday. Will be some windy areas, but tomorrow and Wednesday, again, nothing comes out as being a problem for travel. But watch what happens as we go into Thursday. That low up in north central Canada starts to get the tail. We talked about this tail last week when you get these areas of low pressure that expand westward on the ground. Very cold air that is on the ground here in this situation forms and then is pushed south in a counterclockwise flow around the low. Now, it doesn't look like much, but that same low we showed you on the satellite imagery in the Gulf of Alaska is going to slide down the British Columbia coast and into northern California. And then as we go into, this is Thanksgiving morning, 
So this is Wednesday. This is Thanksgiving morning. You can see that southerly push. As moisture from the low here in uh, coming out of the west coast, colliding with the cold air coming out of Canada, and we'll do this with arrows. The blue air is the the blue arrow is the cold air coming in. Really, nothing to stop it. Comes down the divide, and this upper level low intensifies a bit and brings moisture into the mix. We call this overrunning, where cold air gets onto the east side of the divide and moisture comes up over on top of it. It is a very efficient way to make it snow around here. The collision of air masses, you just basically put two very different air masses together and you're gonna get a lot of winter weather. So it's a situation, we've seen a pattern like this many, many times. You see these once or twice a winter. This time it's uh, happening maybe a little bit earlier than we sometimes see with the cold air coming out of Canada being quite intense. So we put those two things together and then by Saturday night into Sunday, more cold air comes in. There's another surge that comes on in. So there's a, a push of Arctic air during the day, Thursday, Thursday night into Friday, Saturday night into Sunday, another surge of Arctic air comes in and it's gonna spread not only on the east side of the divide, we talked about this last week as well. We were thinking that, well, maybe it would be held up by the divide. Nope. So for you West Slope people, Western Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, Western Colorado, back into Nevada, you're gonna get the cold as well. In fact, very cold air spills onto both sides of the divide. And you can see the cold as it goes through. So the first graphic here starts with Wednesday morning. You can see Wednesday starts off warm then you can see the cold and you can see those blue and those green colors on both sides of the mountains. So everybody gonna get into the action here in terms of the cold. So that's the cold. So you can see Wednesday is fine. It's really during the day Thanksgiving and especially Thursday night and Friday when that really cold Arctic air comes in. Now what I'm gonna show you is how the precipitation evolves. Now this goes through here an hour at a time starting at around 5 a.m. Thursday morning. And so by Thursday night, and then this is by Friday morning, and then this is by Friday evening, and this is by Saturday morning. So you can see it comes from the north to the south, and that snow and that cold sticks with us all the way through Sunday. So you can see, okay, so this is Thursday morning, southern Montana, Billings, northern Wyoming. So during the morning hours of Thanksgiving, Montana, parts of Idaho, and northern Wyoming, I-90, are into the snow. Okay, later into the day Thursday, that spreads into Casper, the I-25 corridor, and then overnight Thursday, into Friday morning, it gets to I-80, gets to I-70, I-76, all the way down to I-40, into New Mexico by Friday night and into Saturday. So the weather deteriorates from the north to the south. Now there will be some timing differences and that'll be something that we'll hone in on as we get a little bit closer. So trying to time your travel on Thursday could be tricky, but if you are trying to travel on Thursday, north to south is how the weather will go. If you add up all that time frame, pretty impressive amounts of water coming in together with this system, and you're gonna get pretty impressive snow amounts as well, because you're gonna make the snow production efficient because of the very cold air. So you can see the blue, the pink there, the darker blue colors, that's where the snow accumulations are gonna be most likely in the region. And if we were to look from a nationwide standpoint, this is the same period. This is Thursday through Sunday in our neck of the woods for the country. You can see that the heaviest snow is here and then up into New England, but some lighter snows there in the upper Midwest, some lake effect snows possible into the Great Lakes. And you can see how far south that cold air and that snow could be all the way down to Interstate 40 into New Mexico and Texas uh, before that push gets all the way done. We'll have more updates as we go through, but we're certainly gonna have travel problems Thursday through Sunday.